Welcome to Get In, the software-defined vehicle podcast from BlackBerry. With this series, we're diving into what the future of transportation just might look like. So don't just stand there, get in. Welcome back to the LA Auto Show. I am Steve Kofsky. I'm the editorial director for BlackBerry. And with me, I have a very special guest. And Stefano, I'd like you to introduce yourself if you would. Of course. Uh, thanks, Steve, uh, for having me. Uh, very nice uh, to be with you here at the LA Auto Show. I'm Stefano Marzani. I'm the worldwide tech leader for software-defined vehicles in AWS. AWS, of course, a partner of BlackBerry. And uh, we, we partner around uh, Ivy. And although I know the answer to this, I get the question a lot, and it's a hard one to answer. What is Ivy? Oh, I should ask uh, that to you. <laughs> yeah, but you should. You I should. can try to provide an answer to that. Ivy is a framework that enables you to build a couple of things that are very relevant nowadays. One is virtual sensors that can be deployed inside vehicles to get insights. That's the second part, right? So what does that mean? For example, think about artificial intelligence, all the rush for artificial intelligence right now. And I think it's uh, uh, how you deploy artificial intelligence in cars. How you deploy some intelligent algorithm that is able to detect uh, from all your fleet of vehicles, electric vehicles out there, the behavior of the electric battery and uh, maybe provide some recommendations to optimize it for an OEM. That would be maybe, a, I don't know, you get 2% of the range. That would be interesting, yes. right? Or maybe tailor it to your experience because your driving style is different than mine. And that optimizes the usage of the battery. Ivy is, is there exactly for this purpose, to send to the vehicle this kind of uh, machine learning algorithms that can become virtual sensors and that can provide this insight specific to every part of the car, obviously. So we talk about battery, but can be the usage of the infotainment system. It can be related to ADAS functionality or uh, safety, because, uh, and that's the beauty of the collaboration, working with BlackBerry that is very well known for uh, security, functional safety, reliability. You can really go deeper inside the vehicle and distribute this content even on critical systems. There's a lot of what you said that I think I find very exciting. People don't think about the cloud being part of their car. Oh yeah. This is a very new concept. Explain yeah. how, how should consumers view this and what does it mean? Yeah. So the cloud uh, is technically not part of the, of the, of the car itself. Mm -hmm. So the cloud, uh, but the car is, uh, will, in my opinion, host a little bit of the cloud inside in terms of technology, cloud technology. Mm -hmm. Because uh, think about the transition we are uh, into. Uh, cars uh, are radically changing, radically. There's a disruption right now in the sector. All the OEMs uh, that we are working on are thinking how they can overhaul the electric electronic architecture, consolidating the more than 100 ECUs that they have in a car right now to a few, right? And very powerful ones. But you can't just uh, take the software that is inside those boxes right now and flop it into this consolidated unit it will just blow up, right? So it yeah. will not simply not work. So you gotta reorganize the software stack. How do you reorganize that? When you have, let's say a system that there is a multi-core, maybe 10, 15 and, and more core inside an HPC. So you have to partition that in different operating system, in different processes. But this is exactly what we do in cloud, if you think about it. If you take one of our AWS Graviton processors that are ARM-based, Yes. And you know, we just, uh, it's, uh, that system has 64 cores. You partition these 64 cores and allocate, uh, I don't know, four of them to an OS for specific purpose. And another three for another OS for another specific purpose. So microservices and the cloud native technologies. This is uh, the technological part that is very useful to reorganize the software stack. And then there's the cloud cloud. Right, so they, that big data center kind of uh, environment. And in there already, the automotive uses that extensively for uh, specifically, I'd say two, three main reasons. One, to store the data that is coming from vehicles, can be test fleet or connected vehicles that are continuously sending information to the cloud. And then for uh, simulations, verification and validation activities to validate the software design new software, test it out, and uh, machine learning training. So especially for ADAS or autonomous driving functionality. 
So you see cloud technologies inside the vehicles and the usage of cloud resources in data centers. And that creates this kind of a control plane, data plane play between vehicles and the cloud that is really interesting. That gives me a whole new perspective in some ways because really the cloud is about virtualization. It's about, yes. you know, uh, uh, taking literal, you know, physical machinery and extracting, you know, extracting it so that we don't even think about it. Absolutely. It, it's and just, Cunix it's just knows there. about it because, uh, yes. you know, the Cunix hypervisor yes. is uh, very diffused on the market in vehicles right now. And the Cunix hypervisor is a virtualization mechanism. And hopefully we'll have that on AWS soon. Yes. Well, and that, that's another thing I want to talk to you about. So um, that really uh, fundamentally changes many things in how cars are created yes. and how the software of cars are created. Um, it, it used to be, and still is in many cases, if you're not using our technologies, uh, that you need to be co-located with that hunk of hardware, Absolutely. whatever it is. Yes. Whatever it is you're programming, whatever it is you're developing against, you need to be in the same spot with yes. that. And so that's going to just geographically, you know, the logistics of that mean only a few people can work on that and only in specific places. Yes. That's going away. Totally, totally. And that's uh, specifically and particularly true for infotainment, artificial intelligence, ADAS uh, functionalities, because we see most of our customers are consolidating ADAS and IBI in these uh, big platforms. And uh, that's particularly true because these big platforms, multi core system, can be relatively easily virtualized in terms of resources. And that's it's a pivotal moment for the development because think about it, Going, uh, you are going from a scenario where exactly as you were saying, you need a piece of hardware on your desk to work to a scenario to where if you have a browser, you can work as a developer because the systems will be available through the network in a virtualized form in your browser. As we are seeing, for example, uh, for, uh, for developments uh, with the uh, Android-based infotainment system or AGL, where these operating systems are fully virtualized, right? And we presented uh, with a couple of customers already this model in production, and uh, the effect of it is a uh, total disruption. So we produced uh, with uh, one of our partners, which is a customer for, for you as well, Marelli, mm -hmm. uh, this uh, first version of their uh, uh, inst instrument cluster and infotainment system has been presented at CS 2023. And uh, they say that uh, adopting these virtualization techniques, everybody in the world can now develop for that specific component, even if they don't have the component physically available. That uh, implied uh, a 70% reduction in time for development. Seven zero. Seven zero, wow. 70%. And 50% reduction in cost, especially in the prototyping phase. So what else yeah so, and to me again creating you really can create a community of developers out of it because you can't really do it if you still rely on a kind of physical component to do that you can't provide physical components to a large amount of developers but you can provide all of them with proper virtualized resources to let them work so super exciting time it, it has kind of a almost a democratizing effect. What really was miraculous about the the smartphone was when it became a development platform that anyone in the world yes. could use to express their ideas and create new value. Yes. Um, and you know they uh, uh, Ed Lowe from Motor Trend talking about Uber. You know, yes. you know what a, what a, this is a concept nobody yes. could have had prior to that. Um, that happened with phones and that's kind of, you know, done now I and mean, it's still going on. It's exciting, but it hasn't been able to happen with cars. Are we are we facing that kind of a revolution? I really hope so. The reason why it's uh, not that it don't, it not happened in cars is that cars are a delicate product. Yes. If you do something wrong, uh, you really risk the life of the people who is in that who are in that car specifically yeah so cars are a it's a sector that is and, and you know perfectly being in a blackberry because yeah. you have easel c easel d certified <laughs> operating systems hypervisors and stuff yes. for that specific reason because uh, on powertrain on uh, brake by wire systems on uh, uh, you know steering uh, you don't want to you know you don't want to have problems uh, given the software yes. and nico nico provided during the panel a very good uh, you know, uh, separation in a way. So critical areas of the car 
and areas where it's less critical, yes. right? But nonetheless, uh, the cars are a delicate environment, even from the user perspective, HMI system, human machine interaction system. Yeah. So you gotta take that in consideration where you create, uh, uh, you know, content for the car, being content, uh, ADAS, IVI, or artificial intelligence assistants that are uh, that are coming inside the, the vehicle itself. So, uh, so we gotta do it right in a way, right? So to provide the developers and uh, not just with tool to and APIs to just develop their, whatever they want, but even with the toolings and with ways to measure the impact of what they are doing. So, for example, during the the panel we discussed about this uh, in vehicle testing, right? So silent mode. Yes. or uh, other methodologies that can be used to test the software in real conditions, right? So it's there for beta purposes, it's not controlling the car, but it can be observed in respect to what's in production to see if it improves you know, the performance overall of the vehicle. And this is one just of the techniques. The other is going through cycles of simulations, right? So collecting data, using the data to create scenarios, right? That can be used to test piece of the software in the real conditions that the cars and, and drivers, passengers, are when they are driving. So these are other important elements. Not, it's not enough just to provide APIs, right? yes. like, like we do on the phone. Yeah. It's really important to provide this kind of tooling to make it sure that it's uh, secure, it's safe when it's deployed. It's one of the things that, that uh, I get excited about, I get very passionate about, is the things that you're working on the things that, that Nico and BlackBerry and the QNX team are working on have the the ability to save lives, yes, to preserve life, and um, that is uh, such an important element. When we, you know, all of us have been touched by someone in our life, you know, that um, that maybe technologies are coming that those accidents yeah. wouldn't have occurred. That that's a, a major change that we can look forward to, and maybe in the near term. That's, uh, that's uh, what we hope, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think it's, very, it's a very important moment for that to close uh, what we call the big loop, meaning uh, closing the big loop. The big loop was a very nice uh, blog, post, um, blog post from Porsche Engineering in 2021 that defined this concept exactly in uh, collecting data, generating new software that is validated or created through that data, and then deploy the software for testing, right? Yeah, I mean, and uh, the cycle on, under real conditions, so on, a very large amount of vehicles, not just on the test fleet, right? Yes. And uh, I think this is really key because if we can achieve that, we will move faster in defining ADAS functionalities because ADAS and autonomy, the biggest problem still remains uh, capturing the edge cases, right? That can happen. We were discussing about the case, right? Maybe you can find a desk on the highway. It doesn't make sense, but it right. can happen. Maybe yes. it, it fall off from a truck uh, while driving and you have a desk in the middle of the highway, but Maybe you never trained your uh, perception algorithm on that specific case. But if the cars that or the vehicles that are going through that situation, right, can collect the data saying, oh, here we have something unusual. Please record this situation and send it up for analysis and for integration of this. That's the real value that you can have and move faster in creating this uh, functional, functional safety kind of content that is, uh, yes, the most precious one, if you will. Yes. All right, we're, we're coming to CES. It's just around the corner, uh, 2024. What are some of the things that, that we're going to see there? What, what's going to amaze us? What are you excited about? So I'm excited, to be very honest, uh, to see the industry coming together. Uh, so uh, CES 2023 has been important for us uh, to present technical concept uh, or services, products, uh, and the uh, and in this year, we really saw, and it's been uh, very, very evident, for example, even at the IAA that we participated earlier in the year, that the industry is kind of coming together with this new vision, right? So of the big loop of uh, the importance uh, of uh, delivering software, creating software pipelines, uh, optimizing data collection, um, the possibility to uh, you know, deliver artificial intelligence at the edge with technologies like BlackBerry Ivy, for example. Yep in the, uh, the virtualization aspects. So on the QNIX AMI, as we say, so QNIX in the cloud running natively, uh, as an example. So it we will have, of course, at uh, CES uh, in, in your booth. Uh, and so that, that's, I think it's, uh, 
all this uh, is important. So not just, uh, it won't be just single actors presenting things, but then more and more uh, the industry coming together and uh, starting to elaborate on this concept uh, and starting to implement part of this concept uh, really to do the step that is necessary to yeah. go to, towards software-defined vehicles. Well, it's the, the future of personal transportation and every form of transportation is changing so fast, it's hard to even catch up. We're, we're so lucky to have uh, people like Stefano bring us up to speed a little bit you know, maybe more than I can understand. Maybe people listening will, will understand better than I do. But thank you so much for taking some time for us. Thank you so much, Steve. It's been uh, great. Thank you so okay. much. And thank you as well. Buddy. Yeah. That's the end of our episode for today. If you'd like more information on the topics or our guests, please check out blackberry.com slash podcast. Get In, the Software Defined Vehicle Podcast, is available wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with our latest episodes. Thanks for joining us.